Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this Spaced Out Dude edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and today we're exploring somewhere we all live. Yep, that's right, all, including you, Captain America, who lives on the moon. Because we're not just looking at our pale blue dot today. Oh no, we're exploring all of the solar system. But which planets are secretly saving our lives all the time? How many rings exactly does Saturn have? And can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? Because I could really use a wish right now. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so prepare to get the DL on RS- Actually, it's best not to initialize that, as we take off into 101 facts about the solar system. Number one. So what exactly is the solar system, and what does it consist of? Well, according to NASA, who I hear are pretty clued up on such things, our solar system consists of our star, the sun, and all of the things bound to it by gravity, including several planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. Number two. Why is the solar system called the solar system? Well, the word solar comes from the Latin word sol, which means sun, and so everything related to the sun is called solar. And you know, the sun is at the center. It's only right that we name it after that. Number three. The solar system is located in an outer spiral arm of our galaxy, the Milky Way. This arm is called the Orion Cygnus Arm, or Orion Bridge, or Orion Spur. It's approximately 3,500 light years across, 1,500 of which is taken up by our solar system. Number four. The solar system formed around 4.6 billion years ago, when a giant interstellar molecular cloud collapsed. R.I.P. King. A molecular cloud, by the way, is basically a big space cloud full of dust and gas, but not the fart kind. It's mostly hydrogen, or H2. Number 5. The cloud most likely collapsed because of a shock wave, which scientists believe was probably caused by a nearby exploding star called a supernova. When the cloud collapsed, it formed a solar nebula, which is basically a big old spinning, swirling disk of material. At least that's what the NASA website says. This is hard. Number 6. This is the theory according to the 18th century scientist Emanuel Swedenborg, Emanuel Kant, I said Kant, and Pierre Simon Laplace. Of course, the theory has been developed since its inception, but the nebula hypothesis is the most commonly accepted and widely believed explanation for the formation of our star system. Number 7. So, at the centre of this swirly-whirly disk was a huge gravitational pull, which gained such huge pressure that hydrogen atoms smashed together to form helium, which in turn released a whole lot of energy, and that, mother factors, is how our sun was formed. Number 8. In other parts of the disk, other matter was also smashing together. The larger of these clumps of crap would be big enough for them to have their own gravity, which would shape them into spheres and make them planets and moons. Obviously not everything magically clumped together, and that is why we have asteroids. Number 9. The asteroid belt is roughly between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, and has loads of remnants of the early solar system floating around there. Other bits and pieces would become asteroids, in case the name wasn't clear, comets, meteoroids, and even tiny irregular moons. Number 10. Obviously being old as Yo Mama at 4.6 billion years old, sorry that was incredibly disrespectful to your mother who I'm sure is lovely, the solar system has gone through a lot of changes since its formation. Loads of moons have formed from circling disks of gas and dust around their parent planets, and some others are believed to have formed of their own volition before falling into the gravity of their respective planets. And in the end, there only existed the will to dance. Number 11. The moon of the Earth, though, is theorised by some to have formed as the result of a giant collision. It doesn't sound very exciting, but bear with me. This theory believes that a collision took place between a very early stage Earth and another planet around the size of Mars called Theia, with the impact resulting in, well, the moon. Number 12. So at the centre of our solar system is the solar, I mean, sun. And yes, we know it's massive, but just how massive is it? Well, 99.86% of the entire mass of the solar system is found in the sun. In terms of literal size, though, it's around 1.4 million kilometres in diameter. It would take around 1.3 million Earths to fill it. Number 13. The sun is hot. Number four, no, I'm kidding. The surface of the sun actually isn't as hot as its atmosphere. The surface measures around 6,000 Kelvin, or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The atmosphere, though, scorches at 100,000 Kelvin, which is the equivalent to around 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Number 14. Surprisingly, this isn't the hottest it gets, though. The outermost layer of the sun is called the corona. Oh god, I'm having flashbacks. It's barely visible because of the brightness of the surface, but it's the bit you can see around the moon during a solar eclipse. Here, temperatures can reach around a million Kelvin. Jennifer Lawrence is hotter. Number 15. These extreme temperatures allow particles to move faster in the corona, and they go so fast that they're able to escape the sun's gravity. Once escaped, these particles make up the solar wind. Number 16. 
The solar system is made up of four terrestrial planets, four giant planets, and the dwarf planet Pluto. <laughs> I said it wrong. The four terrestrials are Mercury, Venus, Earth, woo, represent, and Mars. And the four giant planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, <laughs> and Neptune. Number 17. There are also two categories of giant planets. Jupiter and Saturn are both gas planets, so named because they're mostly composed of hydrogen and helium. And Uranus and Neptune are ice giants, because they're made up of heavier chemical compounds like water, ammonia, and methane. Science. Number 18. The gas giants are also sometimes known as failed stars, which sounds harsh, but there you go, that's just life. This is because they contain hydrogen and helium, the same basic elements as a star, like our sun. Number 19. Closest to the sun is the planet Mercury, not to be confused with the chemical element or Freddy. Named after the Roman god of money and delivering messages, Mercury is also the smallest of all the main planets in the solar system, being only slightly larger than Earth's moon. Don't come at me, Pluto stands. We're not getting into that. Number 20. A year on Mercury is only 88 days. The planet hurtles itself around the sun at almost 112,000 kilometers an hour, the fastest of any of our planets. This orbit is elliptical too, so its distance from the sun can vary anywhere between 29 million and 43 million miles, depending on its place in orbit. To put that in perspective for you, the Earth has a difference of around 3 million miles at its closest and furthest points to the sun. Number 21. Despite Mercury being the smallest planet in our solar system, it's actually getting even smaller. This is because the planet's iron core cools, which causes it to shrink, and because Mercury has a single continental plate that covers the entire planet, the shrinkage causes huge cliffs and valleys. Number 22, ooh, ooh. Mercury also has the biggest fluctuations in temperature of any planet too. Being the closest planet to the sun, it makes sense that it can reach 840 degrees Fahrenheit or 450 degrees Celsius. But because Mercury doesn't have a substantial enough atmosphere to trap heat, temperatures can plummet to minus 275 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 170 degrees Celsius. Number 23. Mercury doesn't have any moons. That's it, that's the fact. Okay, fine, an extra one, because you've been good. Venus also doesn't have any moons. Number 24. Speaking of Venus, it's named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, and is the brightest natural object in the night sky on Earth, apart from our moon, of course. It's so bright that on rare occasions it can even be visible to the naked eye in broad daylight. Have a look now, see if you can see it. Did you? Did you see it? Ah. Number 25. It's so bright, in fact, that in 2012, an Air Canada pilot mistook the bright AF planet for another aircraft. The pilot then sent her plane diving 400 feet towards the Atlantic Ocean to avoid a collision. Luckily, Venus was still millions of miles away, and no one was too badly hurt. Number 26. Venus is the only planet in our solar system that spins clockwise on its axis, though it does still orbit the Sun in an anti-clockwise direction. Other planets in the system both rotate and orbit anti-clockwise, but trying to focus on that genuinely makes me feel a bit dizzy, so let's move on. Number 27. It also spins really slowly. The slowest in the solar system, in fact. The Earth has a full rotation in around 24 hours, which is what makes a day. On Venus, a single day or planet rotation is 243 days worth of Earth days. Number 28. A day on Venus is also longer than a year on Venus. Let me explain. It takes 225 Earth days for Venus to orbit the Sun, but 243 Earth days to do a full axis spin. So on Venus, a day is actually longer than an entire year. In other words, it's how long every day's felt since March 2020. Lol, pandemic joke, you get it. Number 29. There's a good reason Venus spins differently though, the planet is technically upside down. Not like Australia, no. Astronomers believe that at some point in the solar system's 3.5 billion years, something collided with Venus so hard that it knocked it completely out of its original position and flipped it upside down. Number 30. Despite being further away from the Sun than Mercury, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, reaching around 880 degrees Fahrenheit or 471 degrees Celsius. It's also got an extremely hostile atmosphere, mostly made up of carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid, so it's hotter than hell and made of farts. Nice. Number 31. There are at least 1,600 volcanoes on Venus. There are probably far more, but they're just too small to be seen from Earth. Scientists believe that most of these volcanoes are dormant, though. Number 32. Venus is sometimes referred to as Earth's twin. This is because the two planets are almost identical in size, have a very close orbit distance from the Sun, and have thick, cloudy atmospheres. You might be thinking, hey, let's move to Venus, but that sulfuric acid I just mentioned is extremely poisonous, so maybe not. Number 33. Venus is very windy, and I'm not talking about those gases either. Winds in the clouds of Venus have been recorded at reaching 360 to 70 kilometers per hour, depending on sources. In fact, at their fastest points, these winds are faster than the speed of Venus's actual rotation. Number 34. 
Earth is the third planet from our sun. We actually did a whole video about it, which you should definitely watch after this one, so I won't talk about it too much, but as far as we're aware, Earth is the only planet in our solar system that harbours and supports life. Number 35. If you glance up at the sky at night, I'm sure you'll have noticed there's a big cheesy looking rock floating around up there. Well that's our moon, and it's not made of cheese, sadly. It's our only natural satellite here on Earth, and it takes 27 days to orbit us. Number 36. The moon's orbit around the Earth makes up a lunar cycle, or lunations. And during this time, the moon varies in visibility depending on how much of its surface is illuminated by the sun. These result in the lunar phases that we see, which in return resulted in Jaffa Cakes bringing us one of the most iconic adverts of all time. Oh, and Dawn French. Number 37. Mars is the fourth planet in our solar system, and luckily for you, there are 100 more facts about it in another awesome video we've done. Again, after this one, watch please, but we'll go through some rapid fire stuff here. It's also known as the Red Planet because of the rust colour of its iron-rich minerals that cover the planet's surface. Number 38. Tina Turner was likely singing about Mars in her 1966 hit song River Deep Mountain High, because Mars is home to Olympus Mons, a 17 mile high mountain and the highest mountain in the solar system, as well as the Valles Marineres, which descends 6 miles deep, making it the deepest valley in the solar system. Number 39. Between Mars and our next planet, there's a big old asteroid belt. No points for guessing, that's a belt made of asteroids. But what you might not know is that the mass of the belt is made up of four objects, not hundreds of thousands of asteroids. Number four, T. These four beings are the dwarf planet Ceres, and the three massive asteroids called Vesta, Pallas, and Hygieia. At 940 kilometers in diameter, Ceres is the only one large enough to qualify as a dwarf planet, as it's been rounded by its own gravity. It's also the only dwarf planet inside of Neptune's orbit. Number 41. Jupiter is the first of the outer planets, or giant planets, and boy does it earn the name giant. To put it in perspective for you, according to NASA, if the Earth was the size of a nickel, which is flat, weird of NASA to say, Jupiter would be the size of a basketball. The meaning of life. It's probably not a surprise that Jupiter is in fact the biggest planet, well, biggest anything indeed, in our solar system. It's so big in fact that it's two and a half times bigger than all the other planets combined. Number 43. Interestingly though, if Jupiter was to get any bigger, it'd actually get smaller. Confusing, right? Well, my voice went, confusing. Well, if Jupiter gains any additional mass, it'll become more dense, which means it would start pulling in on itself because of the strength of the gravity. Number 44. Jupiter is a gas giant, and they're not kidding when they say gas. The planet does actually have a firm surface to land on like Earth does. It's almost entirely hydrogen, then a bit of helium and a few trace amounts of other gases, all in layers, like onions. Number 45. So how do we define what the surface of Jupiter is if there's not a literal surface? Well, the sciencey folk define the surface as the point in the gas layers where the atmospheric pressure is the same as that on Earth. When reaching that point on or in Jupiter, the gravitational pull is almost two and a half times stronger than Earth. Number 46. Because of all these gas layers, scientists have never been able to work out what is at the core of Jupiter. It could well be solid, eventually. It's theorised that it could be a dense molten liquid core or just solid rock that's surrounded by a layer of metallic hydrogen. But that's just a theory. A space theory. Number 47. Sounds nothing like him. Jupiter has sometimes been referred to as a failed star, but that's not quite accurate. Yes, it's massive, and it has an abundance of hydrogen and helium like our sun. Jupiter just doesn't have enough mass to trigger the fusion reaction that would make it a star. Probably a good thing for us though. Earth doesn't need any more heat, thanks. Number 48. A day on Jupiter is just around 10 hours long, the fastest of any planet in the solar system. A year on Jupiter, on the other hand, is the equivalent of 12 Earth years, because it has quite a slow orbit around the sun. Probably because it's massive. Number 49. Like Venus, Jupiter can rarely be seen by the naked eye in the night sky. It's the fourth brightest object in the solar system when observing from Earth, after our moon, Venus, and of course, the sun. I hear that's quite bright. Number 50. Jupiter has 79 moons, which is just greedy, isn't it? And many other natural satellites in its orbit. The four major moons are Lo, Europa, Ganymede, and Castillo. Ganymede is actually the largest moon in the entire solar system at 5,262 kilometers in diameter. It's even bigger than Mercury. Number 51. Jupiter also has a very thin ring system. It's quite faint and can be difficult to see, and is made mostly of dust. Thrilling stuff. There are four parts to these rings of varying thickness and brightness. The smallest is the halo, then the main ring, and then the two wider and thicker rings called the gossamer rings. Number 52. The halo and main ring are mostly bits of dust from Jupiter's moons Metis and Adrastea, as well as some other dusty bits. The halo ring is a neutral blue colour, whereas the other three are all variations of a reddish. Number 53. 
About 22 degrees south of the equator of Jupiter, there's the Great Red Spot. It's alright, Jupe, we will have breakouts. <laughs> I'm kidding, this spot is actually a huge storm that's been swirling around for at least two centuries now. That's when it was discovered, but it could have been going for ages longer. Number 54. The spot spins anti-clockwise and takes six entire days to rotate completely. That's right, by the time the storm has spun once, we've spun six times. Oh, and also, no one's really sure why the spot is red. It just is. Moving on. Number 55. The next planet from the Sun is Saturn. It's the second largest planet in our solar system after that behemoth Jupiter, and is roughly nine and a half times the size of the Earth. Number 56. Despite being that massive, Saturn is the least dense of all the planets in the solar system. Like Jupiter, it's mostly made of hydrogen and helium, but Saturn is way less dense. In fact, on average, it's less dense than water. Number 57. There is a myth that because of its small density, if you put Saturn in a massive planet-sized bath, it would float as water has a higher density. While that is technically true, it doesn't take into account the outer atmospheric layers that would just dissolve, and then the inner denser parts would sink. That's the best way I can describe this without a science degree. Number 58. Saturn is probably best known though, like Beyonce, for having rings on it. What? Uh oh. But what causes the rings? Well, unlike Beyonce, not a fiancé. That rhymes. In the case of Saturn, it's just a lot of super fast wind in its upper atmosphere. The song probably wouldn't be as catchy. Number 59. That super fast wind can actually reach up to 1,800 kilometers per hour around the equator. Number 60. The biggest of Saturn's rings is called the Phoebe Ring, so named because it follows the orbit of Phoebe, one of Saturn's moons, and is almost 7,000 times bigger than Saturn itself. The ring wasn't actually even discovered until 2009, and is actually big enough to hold 1 billion planet Earths, according to NASA. Number 61. You're probably wondering why no one noticed this giant ring earlier than 2009, and that's because it's so sparsely populated and the particles and dust that make up the ring are so far apart, it can be difficult to see. It's also not helped by the fact that Saturn doesn't really reflect much light, so something that far away would be even harder to see. It was only made visible with infrared light and heat radiation from objects in the ring. Number 62. The Phoebe ring, as well as Saturn's many other rings, are made of billions upon billions of particles of ice and rock, which can be from small as a grain of salt to as big as a house. These particles are believed to be leftover debris from comets, asteroids, and obliterated moons. There's even suggestions that remnants of former dwarf planets might also make up some of the rings. Number 63. The smaller and more visible of Saturn's rings were primarily named alphabetically, in the order in which they were discovered. So in order from the closest going outwards, the rings are D, C, B, A, F, the Janus ring, G, the Methone ring arc, the Anthe ring arc, the Palene ring, and finally the Phoebe ring. Nintendo 64. The reason there are multiple rings instead of just one big one is because the gravitational pull of some of Saturn's moons pulled the particles into their orbit path, leaving gaps between them. These moons are referred to as shepherd moons as they keep the rings in their orbits. At least that's my- I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. At least that's my understanding of it while not being a scientist. So science folk, correct me in the comments if you like, but be nice, okay? Number 65. The F ring is also cool because it's made up of several narrower rings, which have some kinks and lumps in them, which make them look braided in appearance. This is believed to have been caused, at least in part, by impacts from various asteroids and comets. Number 66. The origins of Saturn's rings are still a hotly debated topic, with many believing that they've existed basically as long as the planet has, but more recently the argument that they're a newer addition has been gaining popularity. Some believe that they could be as young as 100 million years old, which makes them as young as, or maybe even younger than, Earth's dinosaurs. We did a video on those guys actually, but I digress. Number 67. Despite being smaller than Jupiter, Saturn has a whopping 82 moons in its orbit, beating Jupiter's measly 79. To be fair, 53 of those have been confirmed, but the other 29 are still awaiting confirmation of discovery, and thus naming. I hear the name Sam is pretty good for a moon? Or one of them facts? Yeah, not as catchy, is it? Number 68. Saturn's largest moon is called Titan, and is actually slightly bigger than the planet Mercury. It's also the second largest moon in the entire solar system, falling behind Jupiter's Ganymede. Number 69. That's where Thanos is from. Titan is the only moon in the solar system that has a dense atmosphere, similar to that of a planet. It even has clouds. According to Space.com, scientists reckon that Titan is possibly the most Earth-like object that's been found to date. Just obviously Earth is a bit warmer, being closer to that big old sun of ours. Number 70. It's also the only other place within the solar system that we know has stable liquids on its surface. It has lakes, seas, rivers, and it even rains there, albeit the liquid is methane. It also has sand dunes that are made of hydrocarbon, but definitely share similar characteristics to sand dunes that we have in the Namibian desert in Africa. Number 71. 
Again, we probably won't be making the move to Titan anytime soon, as its atmosphere is mostly made of nitrogen and methane. There is, however, a presence of organic molecules that contain carbon and hydrogen, including oxygen, so not all is lost. Number 72. There aren't enough facts. Number 73. There aren't enough facts to talk about all of Saturn's moons, but here's an overview of the coolest ones. Pan and Atlas aren't round like typical moons. They're actually shaped like a flying saucer. Number 73. The moon Enceladus apparently shows evidence of ice volcanoes, which is already badass, but it also has 101 geysers on its southern pole. There's also a moon called Iapetus, which has one side that's bright white, and the other is black as coal, and no one really knows why. Number 74. It's thought that the pull of Saturn's huge gravity might have been one of the catalysts that pushed Neptune and Uranus further out of the solar system. It's also believed to have been partners in crime alongside Jupiter to throw out a lot of debris our way in the earlier days of the system. Number 75. Don't hate them too much though, because as well as slinging a load of rubbish towards us in the early days, it's now believed that Saturn, even more so than Jupiter, actually steers big asteroids away from Earth and to the other inner planets. Thanks, Saturn. Number 76. Much like Saturn, the next planet in our solar system, Uranus, also has 13 rings, but they're super faint and very narrow and dark, so they can hardly be seen. You thought we were going to make a joke about a butt, didn't you? Well, we're far too mature for that here at 101. <laughs> Uranus. Number 77. A day on Uranus is shorter than a day on Earth, with one axis turn taking around 17 hours. A year on Uranus, though, is what the kids would call well long, equaling roughly 84 years on Earth. Yep, that's how long it takes for Uranus to orbit the Sun. Number 78. Uranus is often categorised as an ice giant, as most of its mass is made up of icy materials like water, methane and ammonia. And the methane is what gives Uranus its blue colour. The planet's atmosphere is mostly made of hydrogen and helium, like Jupiter and Saturn. Number 79. Uranus has the coldest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system, despite not being the furthest away from the Sun. This is because, unlike Neptune, Uranus doesn't have any internal heat within the surface of the planet. It also doesn't really have what qualifies as a true surface. This is because the planet is mostly just a ball of swirling fluids. Number 80. Much like Venus, Uranus rotates in a funny way too. It's not quite backwards, but it does spin on its side. It's believed that Uranus also had a collision, don't, with a celestial object that caused it to spin off its axis to the point that it was on its side. Number 81. Because of this, Uranus basically orbits the Sun on its side, causing extreme weather that lasts for around 20 Earth years each. One of these extreme weather events that can occur on Uranus is Diamond Rain. When it falls though, it sinks to the core of the planet, so no bling bling for us. Number 82. Uranus has 27 moons, and they're all named after characters from the works of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. The five main ones are Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon. Despite the amount of moons, the satellite system of Uranus is actually the smallest of any of the giant planets. Number 83. All of these inner moons appear to be made roughly of half water ice and the other half rock. The outer moons of Uranus are a bit more of a mystery, but they're believed to be captured asteroids. Number 84. Neptune is the last and most distant planet in our solar system. Shut up about Pluto, we're getting there. Neptune was actually the first planet to be located through mathematical calculations rather than a traditional telescopic discovery. Number 85. Neptune shares a lot of similarities with Uranus. As well as being absolutely freezing because they're so far away from the Sun, Neptune similarly has a liquid surface made of water, ammonia and methane that surrounds a solid Earth-sized centre. Number 86. Much like the other giant planets, Neptune also has rings, but they're extremely hard to see. There are at least five of them and another four ring arcs. It's thought that these arcs never became full rings because of the gravity of Neptune's moon, Galatea. Number 87. Neptune has 14 known moons, the biggest of these is Triton, named after the Roman god of the sea. The rest of Neptune's moons, when discovered, were then also named after lesser sea gods and nymphs from mythology. Number 88. A day on Neptune is about 16 hours, however a year on Neptune is about the same as 165 years on Earth. In fact, it wasn't until 2011 that Neptune had completed its first solar orbit since we discovered it in 1846. Number 89. Honestly, Neptune hasn't been explored that much because it's so far away, so let's move on to the most controversial object in the solar system, Pluto. Pluto lives in the Kuiper Belt, which is a donut-shaped area that lies beyond Neptune and is home to millions of icy objects. Number 90. Pluto is a dwarf planet. It was given this new classification in 2006 after several similar sized objects were found elsewhere, relegating it to a dwarf planet instead of a full sized planet. There are at least five dwarf planets in our solar system, the aforementioned Ceres and Pluto, and the other three are called Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. Number 91. 
For those of you who are up in arms about the reclassification of Pluto, it's worth knowing that Pluto is about half the width of the United States. It's genuinely tiny. Number 92. According to NASA, Pluto has a lovely heart-shaped glacier that's roughly half the size of Texas and Oklahoma combined. Similarly to Earth, Pluto has blue skies, spinning moons, and enormous mountains. But one big difference is that the snow that falls on Pluto is red. Number 93. Pluto has an elliptical orbit, which means that it can sometimes be closer to the sun than Neptune is. As well as this, Pluto's orbit is actually tilted quite significantly when compared to other planets. Number 94. Pluto, which is smaller than Earth's moon, has five moons of its own. One of these is called Charon, and it's so big it actually makes Pluto and its other four moons wobble unpredictably. This is because the centre of gravity isn't at the centre of Pluto like other planets, it's actually in the space between Pluto and Charon. Number 95. This means that the gravitational field changes and so makes them all wobble, which also isn't helped by the fact that Pluto's other moons aren't spherical, they're more like American football shape. If you live on one of these celestial bodies, first of all, hello, but also you'd literally have no clue what time or what direction the sun would rise from because they wobble that much. Number 96. Arguably one of the most famous non-planetary objects in the solar system is Halley's Comet. The comet returns to the vicinity of Earth once every 75 years, with its next arrival predicted in 2061. The comet orbits the sun elliptically, like Pluto, though far more dramatically. Number 97. Halley's Comet has been recorded since at least 1066, being documented on the Bio Tapestry. It's estimated that the comet has been on its current orbit anywhere between 16,000 to 200,000 years, but scientists haven't yet been able to narrow that down. Number 98. That Kuiper belt we were talking about earlier is just the innermost part of a bigger donut called the Scattered Disk, which expands out of the furthest reaches of our solar system and houses potentially billions of asteroids, comets, teeny planets, and, well, general space stuff. Number 99. The biggest thing we've found in the scattered disk so far is Eris, another dwarf planet. Eris has another crazy orbit that, like Pluto, is elliptical in nature, but lasts an estimated 559 Earth years. Number 100 The most distant object in our solar system, at least as far as we can see, is the planetoid Sedna, found in the scattered disk. See, it's so far away that this is the best picture we could get from our distant puny planet. It's around 76 times further away from the Sun than Earth is at its closest point in orbit. Number 101. It's thought though that there could be an even further part of the solar system that we haven't properly discovered so far. This theoretical space is called the Oort Cloud, and to put into context just how far away it could be, if Earth was just a centimetre away from the Sun, by comparison the Oort Cloud would be 500 metres away. That's more than 500,000 times the distance, so whilst we may think we know loads about our solar system, it's clear that there's still loads left to discover. So those were 101 facts about the solar system. Which is your favourite planet apart from our own, of course? I like Jupiter because of the moons. Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, give us a like and hey, subscribe, because there's over 600,000 of us now, and it's a party. But we need you, so please, give us a sub. In the meantime, though, two videos on screen, you're going to absolutely dig more than a mine, uh, in a mine cart. Anyway, I'll see you there. Goodbye.